Hey guys, good morning and welcome to the official U.S. press introduction for Yamaha Motors 2022 MT10 Naked Bike. Yes, I love naked bikes and today we're going to be operating this vehicle on the back roads of Asheville, North Carolina. How cool is that? All right, folks, there it is. Yami's 2022 MT10 Naked Bike. This is Yamaha Motor Corp's top of the line leader class naked bike. And for 2022, they've done a host of very nice modifications. Look at that new bodywork. Yes! I love the reshaped front end on this motorcycle with that transformer-like LED positioning lights, LED headlamps. Make sure that you have a good stream of light ahead of you. LED turn signals. I really appreciate these acoustic channels that Yamaha Motor has built into the fuel tank. These acoustic channels allow the awesome energy and sound from that 998cc CP4 engine to just emanate inside the cockpit. There is a lot of really neat sounding motorcycles out there, but this CP4 engine from Yamaha ranks right up there. I love the way this motorcycle sounds when you're riding and when you hear this motorcycle go by you, it just sounds so awesome. I don't even know how Yamaha Motor passed sound and emissions testing here in the United States just because this thing sounds so mean and awesome. I love it. Other nice changes we see for the 2022 model year is this radial mount master cylinder. Yes, thank you Yamaha for fitting this component on this motorcycle. The axial system on the predecessor to this MT10 wasn't very good. We are big fans. Brembo master cylinder up front, Brembo rear brake master cylinder out there too. Very, very nice. Now, this vehicle also employs the 2015 gen Yamaha YZF-R1 color TFT dash display. Look at that thing. I think it's a nice upgrade, but realistically, this dash display is just way too small, and the switch gear is way too old and clunky feeling. Yamaha really needs to step it up. We've talked about that many times. Now, this vehicle, as usual, is fitted with cruise control, but it also has a manually adjustable speed limit function. So you can set the maximum speed that this vehicle can go. Apparently in, in Europe, speed cameras are a big deal. So having the ability to set the maximum speed on, on this vehicle is a really handy feature. Other small changes is the rear sprocket has one less tooth so a little bit slower acceleration but a little bit lower rpm in top gear on the freeway we also have yamaha's newly installed throttle grip sensor mechanism that they unveiled on the 2020 yzfr one m all right folks we gotta go we'll see you later all right, folks, here we are at the official 2022 MT-10 U.S. press introduction in North Carolina. For 2022, Yamaha, Yamaha has made a host of modifications to its top-of-the-line naked bike, the MT-10. The MT-10 used to be known as the FZ-10 and then before that this bike was actually known as the FZ-1. I think around 2017 Yamaha had changed the name of this model to have it fit in its global strategy Masters of Torque MT. So you have the MT-03, 
the MT-07, both parallel twin power. Then you have the MT-09, which is powered by an inline three engine. And then we have the top of the range MT-10, powered by a 998cc cross-plane crankshaft equipped in line four engine. It is the same engine that Yamaha uses in its YZF-R1, minus the titanium valve train and connecting rods. Now we test rode this motorcycle in its 2020 plastics a few years ago and we really like this bike. This bike is just, it's a really well-rounded leader class naked bike. But there were some squawks with it and Yamaha has addressed many of those squawks. Let's start with the engine. Now this bike continues to be powered by Yamaha's 998cc liquid cooled inline four. This engine is now Euro 5 compliant. So to do that, Yamaha modified the intake and the exhaust system of this motorcycle. And while they're at it, they made this induction system way more rowdy and way more playful sounding. There's these big humongous cut intake echo cutouts right here that basically just just allow that air, air box to emit its wonderful intake tone. I love the way the intake roar sounds on this motorcycle it just makes it so fun to hold it wide Ooh, I like that chassis so the 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 actual engine sound is is quite a bit louder and more pleasing sounding when you are seated at the controls now, along with the updated intake and exhaust, Yamaha fitted its new throttle, its new throttle tube system. Now this system, I forget the acronym Yamaha calls it, but that throttle tube system was originally fitted on the 2020 YZF-R1 and it's slowly been retrofitted to the other Yamaha motorcycles in the lineup and for the 2022 model year the MT-10 gets it. Now this new throttle housing what it does is it allows for more accurate control of the engine. The ride-by-wire throttle is just way more accurate and organic feeling which I like. You gotta remember Yamaha was an early leader in ride-by-wire technology with its YCCT. But over the years, although it's a good system, it didn't have the smoothest throttle response. It was good, but it wasn't the smoothest and Yamaha has really elevated that with its new throttle tube housing. This motorcycle has four different power modes you can choose from, just like the YZF-R1. We are riding in power mode two, which is max performance with a slightly less aggressive throttle response. Power mode one is, is maximum power with the most aggressive throttle response. And conversely, four is more tempered throttle response and three splits the middle between the two. We also have the ability to now adjust our trash control, slide control, and wheelie control. All of these systems are enabled by Yamaha's IMU powered 
electronic system. That is the same system that it fitted on the 2015 YZF-R1. The previous MT-10 relied on Yamaha's old traction control system, wheel speed sensor, trans traction control system from the 2012 YZF-R1, if you folks remember that. That system was really good, but it doesn't compare to the accuracy of this IMU power system. So if you're someone who really wants a more modern electronics package, this MT-10 delivers that. Adjustable wheelie control, Yamaha calls it lift control, is also included. And this particular vehicle has adjustable engine brake control. So you can dial in engine braking for more or less engine braking effect. I generally like engine brake a good amount when I'm riding down the street. It just helps slow the bike down. But conversely, when I'm at the racing circuit, I generally don't like to have a lot of engine brake. I like that vehicle to really freewheel as much as possible. But the choice is yours with, with this new electronic package. This bike also has cornering ABS. Yamaha Motor doesn't call it cornering ABS, but it does have lean sensitive ABS when brake control is in mode two which is the lesser aggressive setting. When you put brake control setting in one, which is the more aggressive setting, lean sensitive brake ABS, is, is the ABS is no longer lean sensitive. So it's designed for more for track riding. As usual, Yamaha Motors ABS program is definitely on the conservative side especially compared to a European made motorcycle. Those motorcycles always have really aggressive ABS programming, which I like. So if you are looking for a motorcycle that doesn't flirt with the ABS a lot when you're using the brakes aggressively, this motorcycle will not be for you. Speaking of brakes, I love this new Brembo sourced radio mount front brake caliper. God, it's such a tremendous improvement from the previous axial, axial setup. The rear master cylinder is also new and that is sourced from Brembo as well. God, this thing's fun to ride. 467 pounds with a full 4.5 gallons of fuel. So it's about four pounds heavier than the old MT-10. But realistically, we don't feel that four pounds at speed. Now, the thing I like about this MT-10 is just its chassis. It, its chassis is really well balanced and I like how nimble it is. This bike's really easy to put where you want. The ergonomics aren't overly aggressive. If you're someone who wants sport bike, super bike-ish performance in a more accommodating ergonomics package, these big naked bikes like the MT-10 work really well. three-way adjustable front suspension with the preload adjusters atop each fork cap and we have an adjustable rear shock so you can hone the preload spring preload and damping settings of the suspension God, this bike's fun to ride. Keeping tabs on everything is a new, well, not new to Yamaha, but a new for MT-10, color TFT dash display. This is the same 
TFT dash display that Yamaha has used on its YZF-R1 since the 2015 model year. Now we do appreciate Yamaha upgrading the dash from the previous LCD display. Realistically this dash is just way too small. While it was class leading in 2015, fast forward seven years and it's just downright old and small. Now all the electronics are manipulated via Yamaha's menu control wheel here right here. So the control wheel is really easy to use. You can make adjustments while you're riding which I like via these mode and up and down arrows here. But the tactile response of this control wheel here at my right hand side thumb is just really sloppy. It doesn't offer very good tactile feel so it's hard to make those micro adjustments especially when you're wearing gloves. We've talked about it many times in other Yamaha review videos and articles that we've published and they really need to upgrade the the tactile response and function of the switch gear. It's just it's downright poor. Yamaha can you please do that for the love of God also put a bigger color TFT screen on these vehicles. This thing's just too old. What I do like though is this handy 12 volt power port located right underneath the dash display. That makes it easy to fit a USB style charger so you can charge your gadgets while you're riding. God, this bike's so fun to ride. So easy to put where you want and just the growl of that engine. This engine just, I love this engine because it just sounds awesome and it has good, good power character and, and torque feel. You gotta remember Yamaha has been using its cross-plane CP4 engine for so long that we're so used to it, but the whole original purpose of the CP4 engine was to give the engine added trackability. It's almost like the, a cross between an old V-twin style sport bike and an old screaming inline four engine that manufacturers like Honda and Kawasaki and even Suzuki still use today. So that hybrid feel, V-twin-esque, inline four-esque feel is what makes this engine so special. And it's got a sound that's just so unique in its segment. Now like before, this motorcycle has cruise control, but a new feature it has is a max speed limiter setting. That allows you to limit the top speed of this vehicle based on preference. Kinda neat. Ooh, I love those brakes. That master cylinder's got nice, nice feel and response. Mmm, yummy. Oh yeah. I like how the suspension on this bike has good pitch control, yet it still goes over the bumps real nice and doesn't offer too, too racy of a ride. It still offers some level of everyday street compliance. While I love Yamaha's YZF-R1, it's, it's downright uncomfortable to ride on the street just because that suspension is set up so rigid. This thing has a little bit more give in it, which is perfect for street riders. All right, folks, look, now we're wa riding in the rain because why the heck not? We love riding motorcycles so much that we ride in all weather conditions. Yes. All right, folks, we just got done with our our ride on the 2022 M. 
T10 naked bike. It was a little bit wet on the wet way home, but that's what riding bikes is all about. Riding in all conditions and having fun. Overall, I do like what Yamaha's done with this 2022 MT10. I'm a big fan of the new styling. I like the R1 based electronics. That's a nice step up especially if you like riding at the racing circuit if you ride on the street maybe that upgrade isn't such a big deal but at the track it definitely is that up and down quick shifter i love an auto blip quick shifter so that is a big improvement as well would i pony up thirteen thousand dollars twelve thousand i'm sorry would i Pony up $14,000, $13,999 for this bike. Well, if I was looking for a high-end, leader-class naked bike, I definitely would have this bike on my shopping list. I really like the R1 sourced engine and that improved air box and air, take, air intake system with those awesome grills that emit the awesome R1 cross-plane engine sound are just totally fantastic. This bike has a lot of character and it almost rivals a Euro European leader class naked bike in terms of character. That's what this bike offers. But still, $14,000 is a lot of money. With it being $1,000 more than the previous MT-10, if I had an MT-10, uh, 2021, 2020, 2019 MT-10, I probably wouldn't buy this bike because the upgrades aren't big enough to really necessitate the purchase of this 2022 bike. But if I was coming from an MT-09 or an MT-07, I would definitely consider this bike. What I like about this bike is that it has true sport bike, super bike like performance where the MT-09 is, is fun and all, but it just doesn't really have that, that knife edge performance, especially in terms of the chassis. The chassis is a little, little wobbly, suspension's a little bit, you know, just not, it doesn't offer the precise road holding of this bike because it doesn't have super bike esque componentry. So that's what, where this MT10 really fits in. It fits in as a high end, high performance naked bike within Yamaha's lineup. All right, folks, that's a wrap from our MC Commute style review of the 2022 Yamaha MT10 from the official Yamaha press introduction. Make sure to surf on over to if you want more information on this vehicle and other vehicles like it. And we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for riding with us today.